Welcome back to The Breakfast, our final conversation this morning. And we are going to be talking about World Cancer Day. Uh, there's grim figures, and maybe you could describe them as frightening um, with regards to uh, cancer here in Nigeria and across the world. We've invited this morning Dr. Abian Zelu, uh, the Executive Secretary, Giving Tide International. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The statistics from the WHO says, you know, about talking about cancer, uh, you know, doubling, basically. And uh, it's saying that there are 43.8 million cancer patients worldwide. And bringing it back home in Nigeria, it says in a country, uh, basically 70% of cancer deaths occur in developing countries. So could you shed more light on this, basically, from your work in this field? Yes, um, the, according to WHO, um, the cancer right now um, is one in six people globally. And unfortunately, most of the deaths are occurring in developing countries like Nigeria, mainly because we do not have the infrastructure in developing countries. And um, so for that reason, you have that... Um, for instance, in Nigeria, we have no comprehensive cancer center, where in India, there are over um, 200 comprehensive cancer centers. That is a, a tertiary health institution where you can have, where, every, um, where you have every department focused on cancer, and you can have access to every form of cancer treatment. So right now in Nigeria, every yeah, unfortunately, we have about 200,000 um, cases of cancer, out of which we have 100,000 new cases, over 100,000 new cases every year. And um, every day we lose about 200 people to cancer. And then for each uh, day of uh, that day, we lose about 32 women to breast cancer, 28 um, uh, women to cervical cancer, 16 men to prostate cancer, 14 people to liver cancer, and then different types of cancer. So um, we have this um, statistic, and it's something that is uh, alarming, it's not acceptable, and it's something we can do something about. That's why the uh, WHO that designated today Every year, February 4, it is designated as World Cancer Day, so that we can amplify the message, rally the whole world, grant this fight against cancer to ensure that um, we are able to reduce the amount of preventable, lively preventable cancer deaths. Because most of these deaths are preventable if uh, we do the right things. For instance, cervical cancer is virtually 100% preventable because it has, it has a precancerous stage. And then if a woman is picked up in the precancerous stage, the woman can be prevented from having the full-blown cancer. You can also prevent it by, with vaccines, the vaccine against human papilloma virus. And so people do not need to be dying in, at the way they're dying from these diseases. So today so is... Um, designated to amplify the message, to let people know that, see, we can actually um, win uh, the fight against cancer. And um, for that reason, the theme of this year, actually it's a three-year theme, it started th uh, th three years ago, is I am and I win. Dr. Nzelu, who delve, uh, delve uh, deeper yes. into... Can you hear me? Hello? Can yes, you, I'm hearing you. All right. We'll delve deeper into the campaign of I Am, I Will for, you know, Cancer okay. Awareness 2021. But okay. quickly, before we go, go too deep, I want you to address the myths that some people, most people okay. have about cancer. Because there's a myth, basically, about cancer, you know, and that it's a white man's disease. We know this is not true, but many people still, you know, believe that that's the fact. So would you, would you kindly address that and the amount of awareness that needs to be done into this spelling myths about the existence of cancer and how it affects people of all gender, all ages, and all races? Now, um, of course, 
cancer is a global it's a pandemic. It affects people all across the world. And I just mentioned the statistics in Nigeria, which shows that it doesn't spare anybody. It doesn't spare children, it doesn't spare um, women, it doesn't spare men. It affects every category of person. Globally, one in every three persons will be diagnosed of cancer in their lifetime. That's WHO statistics. And it's projected that it will get worse. Now, the recent statistics about uh, cancer, you know, about 18 million people are currently have ca um, uh, cancer. And out of that each year, new cases, we have 18 million new cases each year, apart from the f over 40 million cases that are already existing. And then out of this, we have about 9.6 million deaths every year. But most of these deaths are occurring in developing countries. So we cannot, in, an, in Nigeria, for instance, say that it is a white man's disease. Because most of the deaths are actually occurring in developing countries. So cancer affects everybody, and it, including children. Recently, we lost, there, there was a, a young lady that just finished um, secondary school that died recently from leukemia that's, uh, that everybody, most people will know about. So that tells you that it doesn't spare people. Even children are born, born with some children are born with cancer. Like for instance, the cancer of the eye, retinoblastoma, can occur from new when the child is in the first month of his life, the child's life he can have the cancer. So right. cancer affects everyone, mm -hmm. and which is why we have to all rally around. That's why they say every it is everybody's duty to make sure that they do their bit to ensure that we are able to tackle this cancer. Because right. even uh, with this Dr. current Zalo. statistics, WHO is projecting that it's going to get worse. Hello? <laughs> we're here. Um, hold on. Yeah. Uh, I, I want you to sp uh, quickly speak, uh, because we're working with times, so I want you to quickly speak on um, management of uh, cancer here in Nigeria. There is uh, something called comprehensive cancer centers. Um, I'm not sure how many of them we have, or if we have any at all here in Nigeria. Um, so quickly speak on, you know, the level of effort we're putting into managing cancer patients here in Nigeria, how much lack there, you know, exists um, with regards to our management of cancer cases here in Nigeria. And then also you can, you know, address the issue, the uh, confusion with regards to the causes of cancer. A lot of people still do not understand how it starts or where it comes from. Cancer basically is a disease that is results from damage to the DNA of the cell. Normally, the cell, when it's um, from childhood, from, from the womb, the cells are that blood, building block of the body. Just like we have blocks that are used to build houses. The body is made up of cells, that building blocks, cells. So these cells, they grow, they, 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 they divide, uh, but they are controlled. You have the DNA controls it so that it doesn't go out of hand. So when there's a problem with that DNA, then the cell starts growing out of hand. That's what it leads to cancer, depending on the parts of the body. Oh. There's no single cause of oh. cancer. Basically, it's the DNA that has problems. What precedes that cause depends on the kind of cancer. For instance, I mentioned cervical cancer, the major cause of cervical cancer, the human papilloma virus. You have a different risk factor for different cancers, for breast cancer, you have and many habits, the environmental habits can have a, contribute a lot to uh, cancer and the environment to it. Things like dizzy film, smoking, lack of exercise, all these things can contribute to, to um, your diet and all that. They all contribute to cancer. And the, for us to be able to tackle cancer effectively, you have the preventive aspect, you have the uh, diagnostic aspect, you have the treatment. So you need to be able to assess uh, diagnosis to be able to get uh, picked up early and then to be treated. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we don't have those structures on grants for, for cancer. We, we don't have, we lack, our health system is very deficient when it comes to cancer. Uh, right now, um, the basic treatment you use for cancer, radiotherapy, in Nigeria, we have less than 10 in the country. Most of them are not working. And so only a few, and even most of the ones that are working are both mothers and then that's that. So we, we don't have comprehensive cancer center at all. A comprehensive cancer center is a tertiary health institution that every department, 
let's say if you have an institution like Lagos University Teaching Hospital, all the departments will be focused on cancer. They'll be able to take care of any kind of cancer, every stage of cancer, whether it's prevention, whether it's treatment, whether it's palliative, whether it is eye cancer, any part of the body, it will start with comprehensive aid. That's what we have. And that's what you need to have to be able to effectively treat cancer. But unfortunately, we don't have that, which is why you find most Nigerians who could who can afford it traveling abroad for treatment. And unfortunately, because of the fact that the delay in processing the travel or even in the diagnosis in the first place, a lot of people that even travel still end up dying. So oh, it is a, 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 a pathetic situation, which is why we have more deaths, even though cancer occurs globally, it is the incidence is increasing across the board, but the deaths are increasing more in developing countries. And like WHO projected that there will be 60 percent increase in cancer deaths by um, 60 percent increase in cancer deaths within the next two decades. But All right. the increase will be worse in developing countries, which will be by eight, over 80 percent. Hmm. So we have a big problem hmm. because we don't have the infrastructure abroad. For instance, in the U.S. now, they have over 1,500 comprehensive health centers. Like I said, India has over 200. Even places, some smaller countries than Nigeria, in Tanzania, they have a comprehensive health center and every single cancer patient is treated free of charge. So if you are a cancer patient, you are a citizen of that, of Tanzania, you don't need to pay any penny from the diagnosis to the treatment for your cancer. So but we don't have that in Nigeria. And that's why we're saying today we need to know that we need to have this infrastructure on ground. Luckily, right. with the work of the National Cancer Prevention Program, we, we currently have mobile cancer centers which go to, from community to community to carry out free um, outreaches. But we need to now scale it up by having the comprehensive cancer centers that we'll be able to optimally treat people so that people will not need to travel. Imagine what happened with the COVID-19, with the lockdown. Yes. With the lockdown, we found that people could no longer travel abroad, even if you could afford it. And you are, if there were some people that were just processing their travel abroad before the lockdown. And they couldn't travel again. So you find people dying because they could not have access to treatment. So that's why it is important for us to have the local infrastructure to have the comprehensive cancer center right here in Nigeria. Right. And it is something that is achievable. But we are losing a lot of resources. Over 1 billion US dollars is spent on treatment abroad, according to CDM estimation. All right, Dr. Nzelu. Let's talk a bit now about the... Let's talk about the campaign, the I Am I Will campaign. What is it about and what should it mean to the everyday Nigerian? Yes, the I Am and We campaign is to let us know that if we, for us to be able to win this war against cancer, every individual has a role to play. So, and it's calling on everybody, it's declaring that each person should commit to doing his bit. So if you do your bit, I do my bit, we will end up being able to win this war against cancer. It aligns with um, the conversion of some people like um, Lily Tomline, who said that, I wonder why somebody doesn't do something about that. Then I realized I was somebody. You know, when things are happening in the country, we tend to look at, ah, look at the government is bad. This person is doing this. This person is doing it. And then we don't come around to look at, what do I do to make a difference? How do I contribute to a change? How do I also to contribute to a positive transformation? And so this is a carrier call to tell us that everyone has a role to play. You need to, you can, you need to know that you will have your screening. You need to be able to go for your screening, but you need to have the infrastructure for the screening. If there is no infrastructure for the screening, where do you go for your screening? So well, we can contribute towards making it happen. This comprehensive health center that I said is not available in Nigeria and they will be going abroad for, and then you see even those that cannot afford it, you see them they can, uh, going around begging for people to, to contribute so that they will travel. But usually at the time they're doing that, it's already too late. Do you know that if one in seven Nigerians, we give only 1,000 Naira, within a year, in less than a year, a comprehensive cancer center will be ready in this country. The money that was spent to on treatment of, for cancer in a year is enough to build 20 comprehensive cancer centers every year in Nigeria. Yet we don't have one. 
So the campaign is telling us that why you, if you do your bit, if you don't wait for, uh, you don't need to be the, uh, the big man, you don't need to be a millionaire, you don't, so be able to contribute to this change. So if one in seven Nigeria contribute one thousand naira, we have a compressive gas center. Hmm. If you, you um, tell, if you cannot contribute, you talk, you 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 know somebody that you can talk to. You okay? They are a child. You can tell, talk to your parents. This is what is happening. Or do you know that there's no compressive gas center in Nigeria? Do you know that about two hundred people are dying every day in Nigeria for cancer? Do you know that we can actually make a difference if we do join us together? Um, Dr. Nzalo, Dr. Nzalo, if you can, in um, one minute max, uh, speak to us about healthier living um, habits for Nigerians um, that might, of course, uh, help uh, prevent uh, cancer in the future. In one minute, please, we're, we're out of time. Yes, we, 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 uh, we for, for one of the ways to prevent cancer, like I mentioned, the habits affect your, your um, survivor or your risk of cancer. So avoiding smoking, having healthy diets, bed fruits, vegetable, preventing, um, <laughs> reducing your intake of fatty, uh, fatty food, uh, red, processed uh, food, red meat, and small, um, having good sexual habits. People that have unsafe sexual habits are at risk of cerebral cancer, even though cancer is not trans uh, sexually transmitted. Some of the risk factors are like hepatitis B and C. They are risk factor for liver cancer. Eighty percent of liver cancers are due to hepatitis B. All so right. if you don't have, uh, yeah. if it, if you you have practice your good sexual habits, uh, HPV is a major cause of about twelve kinds of cancer, including right. um, the uh, extensive pool yeah. and all that. So having good sexual habits, exercising. All these habits can help you to reduce your intake, your your risk of having cancer. Doctor, and that's another part of I am uh, because if you do that for yourself, your risk will be greatly reduced. And of course, going for screening and taking your vaccination, hepatitis B vaccine, which is now given from birth. So right. everybody Doctor, should ensure that they have hepatitis B vaccine. Thank you very much for Thank speaking you. with us. Uh, the campaign is called I Will and I Am. And we hope that we uh, will continue to spread the message. Uh, thanks once again uh, for joining us. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, healthier eating, exercising, um, quitting certain um, habits. habits like uh, smoking and drinking too much, and, and the safer other ones you mentioned, yes. sexual yes. Habits. Um, habits also. <laughs> Um, that's you. why it's always better to wait till marriage. Yes, you know, true. Like I would always true. say, um, like Anessa and my Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks again for keeping us updated us on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's just a few minutes before Osarigi takes the news and uh, gives you the updates around the world. It's goodbye from us uh, for now. 9 a.m. It's uh, of course uh, Plus TV News. But before that, just to remind you, you can join and follow up on any other conversations that you may have missed out on on social media. It's pretty simple at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same thing with our YouTube channel. We want to wish you a great Thursday ahead. Is uh, bye for now.